ladies and gentlemen, uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, hello, a very warm welcome to all of you to join us at this wonderful evening where we have uh, a lovely uh, chief guest who is known to everybody now, uh, Dr. Fo no, Dr. Mrs. Fozia Kasuri, um, uh, who's a notable name for women empowerment in present day world as well in Pakistan and beyond. We welcome you, uh, Fawzi Kasuri Saiba, to TV Apex. Uh, let's start the proceeding formally. Uh, I would like to call upon uh, the host, the formal host for tonight, uh, who is an orthopedic surgeon you all know, or for some of uh, you who may not know, who don't know, uh, he is Microsoft Certified Specialist. He's the CEO of Medical Legal Professionals, and he is the project of TV Apex, uh, for whom I am the producer. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, put your hands together for Dr. Sohil Chukhtai. Doctor, if you can join us for a second. And start the proceedings for today's evening. I think it's uh, it goes without saying that um, the guest we have today has a great symbolic representation. I don't need to introduce the guest, and that is the easy part. When I say that the, the women empowerment is the basis of any nation building, I don't need to introduce the concept either now, because we've gone far enough. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I may have to explain that. Now we don't, because we know it. And this is what we stand for, and this is what the today's gathering symbolizes. Women empowerment and the role of women empowerment in nation building. This is paramount, and I'm so thankful, Mrs. Fazia Kasuri, that you're here today, and so thankful to all the guests who have come on a Saturday to share the whole joy with us. I just want to show you some of the notable pictures or images we have from Pakistan, which represents the concept. This is a concept which I think does not need introduction. Give me a little bit of my mother's, I will give you educated nation, the Holy said long time back, and we keep saying that, and we know that now. We believe it strongly. Pakistan has a resource of talent. Women, this woman, represents as an Oscar. We have an Hindu poet with the national statue. And when it comes to intellectualism, I think we have a very, very powerful name again who represented Pakistan at various fronts, and she is a symbol of Pakistan women intellectualism as well. And let's not forget that we're not just intellectual, we are strong when it comes to defending the country. And there she is, she is Pakistan's first aircraft pilot, a fighter aircraft, which goes under the bridges, which dodges the mountains. And she's the one who's doing it. She's not just, uh, I mean, I don't think we should say women and men are, are, are now segregated. They are one nation together helping the country. And this is one example of that. And then, then we can speak up for us, ourselves now. We can, whether it's young or old, we can go to the highest platform and tell, this is what I believe in. And she represents that concept. And then we have Pakistani women paratroopers. They're no more scared like 30, 40 years ago. Our women are equal to men. This concept probably was OK for Europe and America, in other words, before. But now we are catching up. And I'm very proud to say that. And when it comes to the youth, we got Arfa Kareem. We sadly lost her, as you know, but she was the one who was the youngest Microsoft certified professional, and I'm, I'm really proud of her. And then it's not just the computer things, it's the field as well. We, we have our cricket team, and Sana Mir has come into the first 20 top cricketers, women cricketers in the world as well. And then when it comes to, again, studies, academics, Sitara Baruj, she did the youngest level O levels, the youngest age O levels. I think she did uh, three O levels at the age of 11. Yeah. 
and and I think uh, let's go to arts now we know that we can't just write read intellectualism fight we can sing and we can perform and we can touch hearts and that is what the name is for she touched the hearts of millions and she took Pakistan's image in pop industry and she took it so high that people stopped hating game because the players got changed she changed the she, she's the same game but the players got changed and people start loving pop music so I put on this this my presentation as well and I think we can defend our country women as equal to men as as, as we can think of our women are good in army they are going high flyers and I really I'm very proud to say that Pakistani army now has a substantial number of women uh, soldiers and high rank officers and then we have the first female Prime Minister of a Muslim country, that honor goes to us as well. And the leader of all, all ladies, all women of Pakistan, I don't think this, this, this set of slides would have been complete if I hadn't put this name at the end. And she's the symbol of Pakistani women empowerment, and let's pay a big tribute to Madam Fatma Jinnah. And I think I must show you that women population, I think, is, is more than uh, this consensus probably is touching 51%, as Mrs. Uh, Fawzia Kasuri said. And we must remember that, that it's 40% literacy rate for women, which is going up but very slowly. And this is my concern. And I really endorse your ideas, Mrs. Kasuri, on your interview. We all heard that here. And I, I appreciate that the budget of KPK is going beyond 30% for women education. We really like that. I personally like it. I'm sure all the audience who are here and abroad, wherever, they would have appreciated that. Ah, the last part. I think women are more intelligent than men. And this is James Flynn, not me saying. Mm -hmm. He said, in the last 100 years, the IQ scores have been changed. They've been reversed. And that is because of the modern concept and the, the complexity of the world. Women, women facing all those issues themselves is making it much difficult, but at the same time giving a, a background to think and nurture. And there we are. The demand of juggling between family and work, that's making a woman very intelligent. And that is a wonderful concept. She's, I think she's, I don't call housewives, I call them homemakers. People who are not professional, they are homemakers, 24-7, no holidays, nothing else, and my salute to all the homemakers. Okay. So, that is the answer. Women are getting more intelligent than men, so all the men sitting here should be, be, should be aware of that, because they have to catch up now. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, I want to finish at that, and again, thank you again for the whole uh, participation. Um, I'll ask Nabil to take over from me here. Thank you very much all. Thank you very much, Doxa. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that we wanted to thank Sanya Qureshi again. We'll do that in the end as well, but it was a brilliant interview, wasn't it, guys, ladies and gents? And um, Mrs. Fazia Kasuri as well, obviously. We shared the ideas. Okay, next we have, um, I'd like to call upon uh, Amber Khan to present, uh, to say, share her thoughts about the, the women entrepreneurship in the society and in the nation. She's a neuro-linguistic programmer. Uh, Amir Khan, if you can join us, please. Thank you. Thank you. Today's um, topic is more to do with f uh, female entrepreneurship. And um, I don't know who coined this term, feminomics, but I loved it. Um, feminine economics. And the reason why it's much more important now is because what we have seen, what's happened since the economic crisis, the last economic crunch. And um, the question today is that, is it time for an eco economic turnaround? I mean, there's a famous quote by Einstein that we can't solve problems by using the very same thinking that we use to create them. Um, I mean, it's 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 very. I mean, if you think about it, it makes it it does make sense. And I mean, a lot of experts these days would agree that the last economic crisis was the result of. Um, 
ma masculine values, or you could say um, man-made. It was a result of a man-made mistake. As I will give you examples, like for example, um, lust for money, big and fast things, quick turnarounds, economic growth, as opposed to feminine values, which are relationships, life, collaborative work, well-being. Um, lots of ex female, un actually I'll give you um, statistics of uh, female entrepreneurs uh, in UK who have made their million in the business have turned the tables on the gender pay gap as compared to the rest of the uh, female population uh, who earn about 15% less than the rest of the men in similar roles. But female entrepreneurs are earning around 15% more than men in the same position in this country. And the trend is set to grow. Uh, according to a venture uh, capitalist, um, Geetha Patel, who is an expert advisor um, to Barclays, she predicts that by 2020, there will be more female millionaires than men, and around a quarter of them will be female entrepreneurs. And I mean, as we can see, this, this has just happened since the last economic crunch. It, you know, this, this is not older than that. What we're trying to say is that business needs to change the way we do business. It needs, business needs freedom from stereotypes, allowing men to care and women to compete. And women's enterprise is changing those rules. They are more innovative with strong ethical values. They are they're more risk aware with long-term vision. They don't look for strong uh, or short small, quick benefits. They don't look for just ful fulfilling the needs of their shareholders. They o they're looking for long, their vision is more long term. They believe in straight forward talking, telling it as it is. They speak in layman terms, disregarding the technical or the macho jargon. They've also embraced the online world of social media, more so than men. Currently, Facebook, Twitter, um, Pinterest, Instagram, all being dominated by women because they understand the value of collaborative work. But they don't really fit um, in the mainstream models of finance and business support. They don't get tenders and contracts. Um, they, ha they have less senior experience and contacts. But um, wom un women in business who have come across um, or who have got past these barriers are now the UK's fastest growing group of entrepreneurs. I must emphasize here that the goal of this presentation is not to uh, make you believe to create more millionaires, but it's about creating lifestyle-driven, female-led organizations. I mean, since the economic crisis, now is as good a time as any to start a business, regardless of gender. So it's an opportune time to encourage women, women to take the leap. The barriers to entrepreneurship are very low, with uh, access to uh, funding available in the form of crowdfunding, which never existed, say, a decade ago. Um, the virtual help through um, Freelancers is much more accessible to start up a business, so the cap, the costs are much lower to start up a business, and hence I say the opportune time to, to encourage women to take that leap. Now, here is a, I'd like to end my presentation with a classic example of what we're talking about: feminine values. What, what you know, this is a classic representation of it. 
um, these women, uh, owners of, uh, founders of Order Capital in Iceland, uh, uh, which is a financial services uh, company, Hala and Christine, they made profit during the economic crunch. Now they're making a stir globally for feminine values into finance. They didn't do this by being more better than men or more intelligent than men. They did this by being different from men. Bringing different set of values and ways to the table. And what do you get from it? You get better decision making and less herd-like behavior. Both of those things are important for your bottom line to produce positive results. We should accept our differences and accept the challenge. We as women can help make the world a better place by being different, not same, but being different. Uh, what I like to say is that it is not about either men or women business or philanthropy. It's about doing good business together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amber. Uh, ladies and gents, uh, we have some distinguished guests amongst us today, and I'd like to um, call them one by one and uh, the, the, the share their the comments and views for today's topics uh, topic with you. And I would request them to be short and specific for two minutes. I think it's that's a, that's a right time to see. Uh, so first in the list is Dr. Shokat Khan, which is the honorary ambassador of a Muslim Sultanate of Philippines. Doxa, please join us on stage. Thanks. Thank you. I didn't know I would be called. I was more interested and grossed into uh, Fozia Kasuri's uh, vision of Pakistan and how they see it. I believe that we have a long way to go. I agree. Uh, but where there is a will, there is a, uh, a way. I think that we need to be looking at our own individual attitudes, our own thinking, because we always believe that uh, it's somebody else's. It's somebody else has to do something. But I think we all have to do it. We have to look at our own attitude with our own families, with daughters, with mothers and so on. And look at our own role within the community, whether it's here or there. We are very much influenced as a Pakistani, particularly even in this country. I believe we've been here for more than five, six decades, but sometime I wonder whether we have changed at all. And sometime I wonder whether what we say and preach, whether we practice as well. And I feel that, um, I think that we are still 60, 70 years behind as well. So when we're looking at Pakistan, we're looking at ourselves, our own attitude, our own thinking. And I always believe that education is not about just getting PhDs, not getting about the economics and certificates. That is the easier part, but the best part is using it effectively. How many of us really understand and really use our own knowledge, skills, experiences more effectively? That is the biggest challenge. It's no good having a lot of money if it's not usable for our communities. No good having all the skills and knowledge, but if it's not usable for other people. And similarly, our education become, is meaningless if that does not bring change, it does not bring any thinking, it does not bring any environment. And I think that it's so shameful that sometimes that we always think that I am okay. It's my attitude is okay, it's somebody else's. I think that if we really think about it, that in itself requires a lot of thinking, a lot of changes. And I believe collectively it's a, a good thing. I'm glad that Fazia uh, Kasuri has come and 
raise the kind of issues that which are behind, we, we don't think of that as a priority. We need to think, and that's a very important one, but also we need to think our own attitude and our own thinking, and I'm glad that <coughs> Dr. Swail Chuktai and TV Apex is providing that opportunity, because we can have musical programs, we can have bhangras, we can have dances, we can have all the good things, and see the sun is shining all the time, but it's the hard issues that affect us all, affects our community, affects us individually, because I may be whatever I am, but I'm part of that society, I'm part of that community, I'm part of that very much environment, because that affects me as well, and it should affect me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doxa. Uh, ladies and gents, we have uh, Dr. Yasmin Sheikh amongst us, um, uh, who is another really, um, um, how would I say, empowered lady in our sort of community here in London. She is from Pakistan. She is the director of Community Honors Award, and she does that at House of Lords uh, courageously. Dr. Saiba, please put your hands together for Dr. Saiba, Dr. Yasmin Sheikh. Thank you. told him not to call me for two minutes because that's not enough, you know, for me. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for asking me. What a pleasure to have a wonderful um, guest of honor today, Fozia. Um, my ancestors came from Kashmir, but um, then they migrated to Lahore many, many years ago. And then my father migrated to East Africa. So I was born in East Africa, but my heart is still in Kashmir and Pakistan, you know. <laughs> and I'm so proud to see um, a fantastic vision that you have for Pakistan. And, uh, you know, sometimes I just wonder that we all agree with what you say, but I think we need to work on men, actually. I'm sorry to say that, it might uh, upset some people, but I have to be very honest here. No matter how good you are, no matter how powerful you are, there is a ceiling here. And uh, not being offensive, and I'm not generalizing that, but what happens, in my own case, I've seen this, and a lot of my other friends, um, as long as you are working under the wings of men, they are happy. They'll applaud you, they'll clap for you, they're well done. The moment you've come out of the wing and you want to go a little bit above the wing or at a level where they are, there is, there is a little bit of that insecurity. Now, I don't blame them because somehow they think, you know, she's a, a weaker sex. Maybe she won't be able to handle. But let me tell you one thing. There was a little quote in the paper the other day I just saw, and what was it? When a man is successful, the woman feels very happy. When the wife, maybe, for example, she thinks, oh, my husband is so successful, you know, and she's very proud of that. But when the wife is successful, the man thinks he's a failure. This is in our psyche, Yana. This is in our psyche. Let's, I mean, I don't want to be like a man. No, not at all. I would like to be a woman, and I'm very proud to be a woman. And very feminine. <laughs> And my style, my style of working is totally different from men because I think they've just got that vision. Whereas a woman comes from so many different visions, as a mother, as a sister, as, I know he's a brother as well. But somehow, I'm, I'm sorry to say, you know, I had this notion about men knowing everything. But when I actually talk to them, I really feel sorry for them because they are lacking so much in them that, um, you know, they are wonderful. I mean, I like men as well. I'm not saying I hate them, you know. But there's something they lack, and I think they, we are lacking. As we are growing, we are getting this type of, that stereotype of men who are very, uh, you know, their vision is very direct. They're not looking at it from different angles. And a woman who can run a home with a budget, whatever she gets from her husband, is a better economically for the country than a man because she looks at all angles of how she's going to spend her money. 
Yeah, it's not just creating schools. She has to see whether the children got shoes. She has to see whether the husbands got enough, you know, food to eat and whatever. She looks at things from such critical points of view that she makes an all-rounder, stronger person. But again, let's not compete with each other. We're not here to compete with different genders. You know that we are better than you know. We are different. And I agree with the last speaker who really touched all the points that I think we don't want to be like you, for goodness sake. We want to be women. We have a different style. Give us a chance. Just give us a chance. And my mother, for example, was not educated. She didn't have a degree. But believe you, the wisdom she had, even in this modern world, I remember her, what she used to say when we were young, and those are applicable even now. And I think you know, well, education is very important, as also Mr. Um, Dr. Shok has said. But the application of what we learn in terms of science, for example, in of chemistry, biology, that is the implication of that scientific learning is not from everyday learning in the way we want to work together. That's something you, you learn with wisdom. You know, so as a paper, uh, as a degree, is not enough. There are lots of other things you have to look. Looking, sitting back and looking at Pakistan, for example. Uh, I mean, I always used to criticize whenever my cousins came from Pakistan, and I said, look, you know, you haven't got this. And he said, you don't really love the country, you know. I said, listen, if I'm criticizing you or if I'm finding some faults, you should be grateful because I look at Pakistan as a, uh, you know, from a, a objecti uh, objectively, not subjectively. I think you're too emotionally involved in that. You must listen to the criticism. And I said, don't say that to me that I don't love Pakistan. I love it too much and I see it going from, I shouldn't say that, I think it's made some progress, but getting in a better way than what it should do. <laughs> so although I, I was born in East Africa, as I said, my heart, and even now when I went to Kashmir with the, uh, you know, with the delegation from, Pakistan, uh, from England, I literally went and sat there and I looked at Kashmir and the children, beautiful, lovely women, and I cried. And one of the ladies says, why are you crying? I said, because my ancestors came from this country and I'm very, very proud to be Kashmiri. And I don't know why I'm crying. You know, but I cried, you see. So we, when we criticize Pakistan, please don't take it in a, in a different way. We want it to improve. Listen to us, women especially. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Seba. Um, I'd like to call upon a very distinguished guest again, amongst you, amongst us, um, whose uh, you, you, uh, who's, you all know is the prestigious mother of uh, the only legend, lady female legend of pop music in Pakistan, or say Indian subcontinent, Nazia Hassan. Uh, Mrs. Muniza Bissi, may I, uh, please join us on stage, ladies and gents. I'm lost for words for you, Mrs. Muniza Bissi. Ms. Anti. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, empowerment of women, it's a favorite subject with any educated person, man or woman. Now when we look at this room, this is an empowered room. Women, Fazia, here, Mrs. Tariq Chaudhry, then we come to our speaker, Yasmin and Sanya, who spoke so beautifully. And everyone here, you see, is someone very special in her field. Look at that little girl. Can she stand there? Who's just done so wonderfully. Yes, you, sweetheart. And she, and she's going to Oxford. Who's sitting next to her? Her mother. Who doesn't know Homa? So this is what it is. What is so special about this room? Why do all these women are here and not where we think, we hope they should be all over Pakistan? There is only one common factor. All these men are educated. All these men have learned through education, which is worldly education, that 
be kind to your weaker people. Now it is that time when physical strength meant much more than mental. These men are all who believe in education and who believe in giving strength to their women, whether they are daughters, mothers, or wives. This is what, what Fazia said, this is what some other speakers said, it's the same thing, it's not the women who need to be empowered, it's those men who suffer from complexes, who are uneducated, who don't know where to assert, they don't know how to use their strength. So the biggest thing is don't let woman be a full human being. And this is what we are facing in our country now. It makes us sad, it makes us ashamed. The only, the only solution is, as Fazia said, and some other speakers too, please educate our boys. They are not strength of the family, they are not strength of the country or the nation, unless they are given education, they are given training, and they are taught right from wrong. In fact, the other day I just heard someone saying, and I think it couldn't be more true, they said Islam gave women the first rights. Who can refuse that and who can deny that? But what has happened? Same men who were taught to give rights to women and children is the same men today using that religion Totally in a different way, they are the ones who are stopping that progress, who are taking our country behind, who are being nasty to our women. So with this educated group here, I know there are many, many, many more. Let's just say, first educate the man. Make sure that your percentage of education goes higher and higher. Empowerment of women will automatically come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manisa Ji. Uh, last but not the least, uh, as you have heard her name already, um, I'd like to call upon, uh, for those of you who do not know, she is a barrister, she's a community icon, and she's a presenter as well. Uh, I mean, uh, Homer Price. Homer Price, would you like to join us on stage, ladies and gents? Please put your hands together for Homer Price. Okay. <laughs> This is very unexpected. Evergreen. Like. Thank you so much. This is very unexpected. Um, I, I, I'm very, very grateful uh, to everybody for, for this, and thank you very much, Suhail. And I never recognize your wife. She looks younger every time I see her. <laughs> so you're a very empowered man to allow her to be so relaxed. Um, talking about women's empowerment, I don't know what to say, really. Um, I come from a very, very liberated family. When I was a child in Pakistan, there were no good schools around so my family sent me to Cathedral High School which was a convent school and I was actually taught Christianity there and every night I used to say our father thou art in heaven at home and the credit goes to my family because they never stopped me from doing that but what they did do was they got me a tutor who taught me the Quran and Islam in the evenings but I think when we talk about empowerment of women, we have to talk about education. We have to educate uh, all the women around us. And I really agree with what Muniza and um, Yasmin have said. You can't really talk about empowering women until you talk about empowering men to accept that when women are empowered, they're not going to provide competition for you. They're actually going to complement what you do. I'm very grateful that I'm married to a very, very enlightened man. And he always helped me to go forward. And between my husband and I, we have brought up our daughter, who is uh, not only educated in the sense that she's going to Oxford, of course, living in this society with two professional parents, that was the easy bit. The difficult bit for me, which I'm very proud of, and to me this is also empowerment, is that she speaks fluent Urdu, she did her A-level in Urdu, and she's also artistic, so she does Kathak dance too, and in fact, next week at the Fez Mela, she's going to perform a number to one of Fez's ghazal. To me, 
I have empowered my daughter, I am an empowered woman, and not only that, I also empower other women, not just through my profession, not just through my television show, because through the show I want to empower men and women both, because believe it or not, in this country, Asian men also need to be empowered, a lot more than Pakistan, because Pakistan has moved forward, but the Asian men who came here have stayed at the mentality they came here 40, 50 years ago, so they need to be empowered, um, and I can go on forever, but I won't, because I'm a barrister, I'm used to talking publicly very, very often. But thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Chukhtai, for inviting me here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omaji. Uh, it was a pleasure having you around here. Uh, uh, before I call upon another lady, I would like to thank uh, Sahib Zada Jangir Saab, who's always um, actually supporting a good cause now, now, and he's a, a financial advisor to KPK government and to Imran Khan, and he's a great host to Dr. Fawzia Kusuri, uh, Mrs. Fawzia Kusuri, I'm sorry, I'm saying doctor, I always do that, sorry, <laughs> you might as well become a doctor now. So, uh, thank you, Sahib Zada Saab, uh, for being here again with us. Uh, I'd like to pass my mic to very dear friend, Sanya Qureshi, to call upon the chief guest tonight, and to say some words as well. Sanya, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. My God, that's quite a lineup to follow, and I'm sure everyone's hungry. Uh, but thank you very much, Amber, Dr. Shokat, Yasmin, Maniza Ji, and Homa, uh, for, for your sort of insights and your comments on, on very much the topic of today, women's empowerment. I don't think we need to sort of over-egg uh, the, the topic, but we would like to invite Fawzia again, and if you have questions, I know that a few of you wanted to direct some questions to her. If I could humbly request that we have four questions asked, and if I could request that you keep them as questions and not comments, we will have an opportunity to discuss and chat over uh, tea and refreshments. So uh, if I could invite Fawzia here to the, the podium. Thank you, G. Give me your name and if you're representing an organization or if you're a passionate Pakistani, whatever that might be, if you could raise your hand and give me your name and, and question. If I take the first one. My name is Khaled and um, first of all, you know, thank you very much for the, you know, all that information we had from you from Pakistan. Uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, uh, going on in the Western world about the women in Pakistan that they are the most most oppressed people, for example. Uh, but uh, there's an impression that every girl who wants to go to school, she's at risk of being shot. But on the other hand, as you all said, and the girls are there who are pilots, who are barristers, and you know, women like you who are representing us, basically. And, as your role as an activist, women activist, how you clarify this for the modern media here, that you know we are not that oppressed. We can do whatever we can. We can be a clothes, we can be a barrister, we can be a pilot, we can be a star. Right. Assalamualaikum ji. First of all, I'd like to say I'm really so pleased, mashallah. Look at all these beautiful women sitting here and all of you here. There is so much that I could learn from you. What answers can I give you? But since I am pleased here, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, give my comment on that. You see, the thing is that um, uh, the question that you have asked, uh, media's role in today's world is very important. You know, uh, what they say about uh, uh, seeing is believing. So media provides the images. It, it gives out information in the quickest and fastest way possible, and especially with the new technologies that are available to all of us around the world. Everything is viral, everything is instant, and you know, news gets spread fast. Now the unfortunate thing about Pakistan is that the good news out of Pakistan never really makes it, you know, in the media. We always hear of incidents of terrorism, of attacks on women, and I agree that it is a feudal society, basically, Pakistan. And we do have these horrible, discriminating, cruel, uh, you know, old traditions of uh, customs of honor killing and attacks 
attacks on women, violence against women. And this is where our role comes in. And actually, I think that you all have a great role, by the way, in rebuilding and uh, the image of Pakistan. In the sense that, mashallah, you're all such wonderful, empowered, educated people. You have access to that this kind of uh, you know technology whereby you can bring out the best from Pakistan you need to be also promoting and saying and talking about all the schools that we have in Pakistan you know our girls our students but particularly darling girls in Pakistan are making world records you know with the O levels and the A level examinations are producing the best talent is coming out of Pakistan at the moment but unfortunately it's not so like um, a lot of people don't have the uh, the information because um, you know our communication uh, is not that um, uh, is not that effective and we need to improve on that but good things are happening in Pakistan um, my question is regarding what you mentioned um, taking this budget uh, for education is now with 30% um, it, it is all good to say that you plan to uh, implement or create an infrastructure, which we know we, it's needed. We talked about sanitary work. Nothing is there. The infrastructure needs building. But that's we're talking about long-term implementation and results to be seen. What is the very next step for the women of KPK that you or your uh, party intend to make or take for these women? What is the very next step? I'm not talking about the long-term vision, but the very next step for these women. To, uh, to, to hold on to, to that hope of changing their future. Right. Um, you see, we have um, always spoken of and already introduced an education emergency in the province of KPK. The Millennium Development Goals that no government, I mean, governments have been trying for a long time to meet them. Uh, PTI intends that by the year 2015, we will have those two over two million children that are out of schools today. We intend to put them back into school, and we hope that at least these two million children will have finished or completed some form of primary schooling by the year 2015. Now, this is a very daunting task. It's not easy. It will require a lot of effort. I, I, I cannot, uh, I can only hope for success. I cannot say we'll achieve it. But, you know, like um, our distinguished speaker here said, believe me, it's all about a political will. If the will is there, if we have the will, we'll be able to do it. Or at least show some tangible results. And people then can judge and say, all right, so these people were at least moving us or taking us in the right direction. As political activists, that is all that we can do is to put our force behind that, to create that awareness. Like I said, you know, during the program, we need to really invest heavily into uh, documentation, into uh, advocacy, and, you know, into literature materials. We need to send people out physically through the media, through the social media. We need to bring about that awareness. Education, honestly, is the only key. It is the only solution to the malaise that Pakistan is affected with right now. For example, I am working with women here and I am ladies, especially Asian women, domestic violence and forced marriage. And I write columns on social and domestic issues. Women empowerment की बात करते हैं, education की भी बात करते हैं। यहाँ पर बहुत खबरतीन हैं, जो educated भी हैं, and empowered भी हैं, लेकिन not emotionally empowered, क्योंकि बहुत सी ladies जो हैं हमारी वो domestic violence के superior से गुजरती हैं, वो अच्छी posters पे भी होती हैं, सब कुछ उनके पास doctor, engineers, लेकिन emotionally they are very weak. So for that purpose, I'm going to Pakistan next month, hopefully, inshallah, to do something for women and children. My question is that how can we um, unko kis emotionally empower them? Because they are emotionally weak, so education is over there. Because they are emotionally weak, they are completely broken. I have done a lot of counseling for them, that they have courage, 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 they have courage,
लेकिन फैमिली प्रेशर कल्चर प्रेशर वो आगे वो बढ़ नहीं सकती तो एजुकेशन तो धरी की धरी रह गई लेकिन इमोशनली दे कॉन्ट वन ई थिंग सो आई वॉन्ट टू टू ऑफ सम सर्जरीज देयर जहाँ पर औरतें आएँ अपनी बात कर सकें अपने दिल की भड़ास निकाल सकें एंड यू कैन गिव दैम इमोशनली सपोर्ट तो इसके लिए मैं आपसे गुजारिश करूँगी कि ये जो भी गवर्नमेंट आती है उसके लिए कुछ करना चाहिए आप बीबी आप बहुत अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं देखिए एक सबसे बेसिक चीज़ इंसानियत की ये है कि हमें इंसान की कदर करनी है उसके दिल की उसके जज्बात के उसकी जो टर्म हैं ज़िंदगी के अंदर हमें उसको अगर हम अप्रीशिएट भी नहीं कर सकते तो हमें समझना तो चाहिए कि ये रियल चीज़ें हैं लोगों को इफ़ेक्ट करती हैं अब देखें जहाँ तक इमोशंस का है आप किस तरह किसी को इनक्रेज कर सकते हैं आप लोगों को इनक्रेजमेंट मिलती है जब वो अपने अराउंड एक ऐसी इन्वायरमेंट देखते हैं जिसमें उनको हमदर्दी नज़र आए जिसमें उनको उम्मीद नज़र आए एंड आई जस्ट से दिस एज अ वूमन आप बिलीव कीजिए माशा आप लोग तो इन मुल्कों में रहते हैं मैं भी बहुत टाइम अमेरिका रही हूँ मगर मेरा जितना सारा काम है वो सारे हमारे ये जो कम्यूनिटीज़ uh, हैं पाकिस्तान के अंदर बस्तियाँ हैं मोहल्ले हैं इनमें वक्त गुजरता है आप यकीन करें वहाँ लोग इतने बेचारे उदास हैं इतने इमोशनली डेविस्टेटेड हैं आप किसी के कंधे पे सिर्फ प्यार से हाथ रख दें तो क्या पता उसके दिल से आपके लिए क्या दुआ निकले बट हाउ मच ऑफ अ डिफरेंस एंड उम्मीद आप उनको देते हैं तो इमोशंस का तो ये है कि हमें वो इदारे बिल्ड करने हमने वो माशरा क्रिएट करना है वो सोसाइटी क्रिएट करनी है जहाँ ह्यूमन वैल्यूज़ हों जहाँ लोग इंसान को इंसान समझें हम बहुत फॉर्चुनेट हैं कि हमें तालीम मिली हमने सब कुछ अच्छा देखा सीखा हम बहुत सही बात है कि अलहमदिल्ला जी कि हमारे फैमिली के अंदर हमारे मेल्स ऐसे थे जिन्होंने हमको रोका नहीं हमें इनक्रेज किया कि हर इंसान में समझती हूँ ऑनेस्टली और आप मुझसे से मैं एग्री करेंगे अल्लाह ने उसमें कोई ना कोई टैलेंट दिया है ना कोई परफेक्ट है सिवाय अल्लाह की जात के और ना कोई ऐसा है जो टोटली इम्परफेक्ट है किसी ना किसी को अल्लाह ताला ने कोई हुनर दिया है हमें प्यार से मोहब्बत से उसको आगे इनक्रेज करना है इमोशंस का तो यही है कि इट नीड्स काइंडनेस आप में वो है माशाला आप ऐसे लोगों के साथ काम कर रही हैं आप मुझे पाकिस्तान में प्लीज़ मिलिएगा और आप आइएगा एक लेक्चर भी दीजिएगा हम आपको लेके भी जाएंगे बट आई आई डोंट नो इफ मे बी someone else has a better solution i just feel it needs a lot of compassion kindness you have to feel in your heart for another human being and say you want to help them aur phir aap apni society mein wo idare banate hain jo unko opportunities dikhate hain jo unko hope dete hain ki doesn't matter yahan tumhare sath dhoka hua okay tum tumhare sath mein husband ne agar koi zyadati ki kuch ki but look now this is something else that you can do ab tum एडवोकेट बन जाओ तुम वो आवाज उठाओ इस जुल्म के खिलाफ तुम काम करो तुम दूसरी औरतों को ऐसे काम करो कि उनके ऊपर ये मुसीबतें ना आए यू नो समिंग लाइक दैट आई वुड इमेजिन के पास सर सैद आए थे कि मैंने आई ने अपनी बनाई है इस पर तकलीफ देखी तो उन्होंने कहा क्या फजूल काम तुमने किया चार सौ साल पुरानी बात करते हो अंग्रेज को आई देखो कि कैसी जायदाद करता है गालिब इतना भी नदी था उनके दो शागिर्द हाली जदीद पोइट्री में उसका जवाब नहीं था और सर सैद हमारे इमाम है इन मफाजिल में भी सियासत में भी और तलीमी मैदान में मेरे ख्याल में हमारा सी जब तब्दील होना चाहिए तब हमारे हमें इरफान आए आपके को जी आपने बहुत सही बात कही है और हमारी जो तहरीक इंसाफ की एजुकेशन पॉलिसी है उसमें बिल्कुल ये है कि सिलेबस जो है उसको रिवैम्प किया जाएगा ये हकीकत है कि हमारे स्कूल्स के अंदर जो तालीम दी जा रही है और जिस किस्म से ये सिलेबस कहीं प्रिपेयर हुए हैं ये बहुत ही एक स्पेसिफिक एजेंडस को सर्व कर रहे हैं हमारे बच्चों को वो तालीम यू सी हमारे अंदर वो 
नेशनलिज्म हमारे बच्चों में हमारी नई जेनरेशन में एक जो ओनरशिप होती है आप अपने मुल्क की लेते हैं कि भाई आई लव पाकिस्तान आप यकीन कीजिए मैं एज ए चाइल्ड मैं पाकिस्तानी स्कूल में नहीं पढ़ी हूँ मैं कराची में थी मगर मैंने अमेरिकन स्कूल से ग्रेजुएशन की और मैं ग्रेजुएशन करके सेंट जोसेफ कॉलेज गई हूँ जब तो वो मेरा पहला पाकिस्तानी एक इंस्टीट्यूशन था जिसमें मैं गई बट आई लव पाकिस्तान एवरी बिट ऑफ मी इज फॉर पाकिस्तान नो मैटर वेयर आई हैव बिन आई हैव ऑलवेज बिन अबाउट पाकिस्तान मगर वो इसलिए कि वो ये तो तालीम तो आप पढ़ाते तो हैं मगर ये चीज़ें कुछ घर से भी आती हैं कुछ ये अपने भी माहौल से आती हैं मगर स्कूलों का बहुत बड़ा और टीचर्स का बहुत बड़ा इसके अंदर रोल है सिलेबस बिल्कुल रिवैम्प होने चाहिए और उनको ना सिर्फ ये कि आप में नेशनलिज्म हो उल्टी सीधी बातें करके नहीं बट अकॉम्पलिशमेंट्स बताएं जी जो हमारे एंसेस्टर्स ने किए हैं हमें बताएं मैं जब मुझे बहुत शौक है कोटेशन का आई एम वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ इट तो मैं बहुत गूगल पे जाती हूँ यू नो आई लाइक टू रीड वो डिफरेंट पीपल आर सेंग अबाउट डिफरेंट थिंग आप बिलीव कीजिए एक्सेप्ट फॉर दो फ्यू रिडांडेंट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ कोटेशन कमिंग फ्राम हमारे फाउंडर कायदे आजम मोहम्मद अली जना हमारे कोई मुस्लिम फिलोसफर्स उन उन लोगों की कोटेशन ही नहीं है मैं अगर किसी चीज को पढ़ती हूं तो मैं मार्थन लूथर किंग से इंस्पायर हो जाती हूं मैं ये सोचती हूं जो इतने इतने बड़े गए हैं हालांकि हमारे पास तो बहुत एक असासा एक ट्रेजर है जी हमारे फिलोसफर्स और थिंकर्स का मगर हम उसको कभी प्रमोट नहीं किया गया है हमने उसके बारे में खुद कभी नहीं सोचा तो लिहाजा वो चीजें कभी फोर फ्रंट में इतनी आती नहीं है हमें उनको इंट्रोड्यूस करके अपने सिलेबस में हमें इंस्परेशन उससे लेनी है और हमें अपनी एजुकेशन के निजाम को ऐसा बनाना है जो हमें एनेबल करे हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को इक्विप करे दैट दे कैन बिकम इफेक्टिव एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबल सिटीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड नॉट जस्ट पाकिस्तान बिकॉज जो भी ये प्रॉब्लम्स हैं एम्पावरमेंट के चाहे वो वुमेन की हो चाहे वो यूथ इश्यूज हो ड्रग इश्यूज हो चाहे वो पॉलिटिकल हो इकोनॉमिक इश्यूज हो सब के अंदर कॉमनैलिटी है कि दे ऑल रिक्वायर जस्टिस दे ऑल रिक्वायर इंप्लीमेंटेशन इन सोसाइटीज में यह है कि क्योंकि तालीम ज्यादा आम है तो या इंस्टीट्यूशन भी हैं या कानून भी हैं उनको इंप्लीमेंट किया जाता है हमारे मुल्क में वो चीज लैकिंग है उसको हम इनशाला बिल्ड करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं इतने मैं आप सबके कमेंट सुन रहा था इनका भी मैंने पूरा प्रोग्राम देखा भी आपसे मैं सवाल करता हूँ आई कुड नाउ थिंकिंग बैक कि क्या वजुहत है कि यहाँ पर औरतें मर्द बच्चे सब ने प्रोग्रेस किया और हमारे मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड के अंदर मैं पाकिस्तान की भी बात कर रहा हूँ मैं पूरे मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड की बात कर रहा हूँ वहाँ पर हम नहीं कर पा रहे दैन परहैप्स आई वॉज थिंकिंग गुड इट बी द रिलीजन एंड आई सेट येस be brave and often stand up and say yes yahan pe religion strains nahi hai freedom of action hai freedom of speech hai us level playing field ke upar aap progress karte hain aur upar aate hain hamara bahut hi khoobsurat religion hai islam aur day one se jis din bachcha paida hota hai hum uski kaan mein awaaz dete hain aur azan sunate hain aur usko islamic way mein upar le kar aate hain वो वहां पे भी करते हैं मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड में कर यहां भी करते हैं तो यहां जो हमारे बच्चे हैं वो क्यों डिफरेंट है देन द वंस हु आर देयर उन्होंने भी आजान सुनी इन्होंने भी आजान सुनी मैं ये डिफरेंट दोनों क्यों हैं आई प्रोबेबली थिंक ये जो जहादी सिस्टम है इसने हमारे इस्लाम को हाईजेक कर लिया है और पूरा मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड में आप देखे मेजोरिटी मर्द भी जाहिर है और औरतें तो बिल्कुल ही जाहिर है मिनॉरिटी सी हो जब आप उनको पूरा टोटली कवर कर देंगे तो उसकी आप एक इंसान की आइडेंटिटी हाइड कर देते हैं यू डू नॉट नो बिहाइंड दैट इज इट अ मैन वोमन और अ स्टैचू क्योंकि आपने उसको टोटल कवर कर दिया उसकी आइडेंटिटी खत्म कर दिया आपके हाउ कैन यू एक्सप्रेस एक्सपेक्ट दैट पर्सन टू कम अप एंड कंपीट नहीं कर पाए फिर आपने दूसरा ये कर दिया कि इसको औरतों को बिल्कुल भेड़ बकरियों जैसे हमने कर दिया है आगे आगे हम चल रहे पीछे पीछे चल रहे एक दो तीन चार पांच अरे भाई कितने चलोगे मेरे पास एक गाड़ी है आई लुक आफ्टर दट कार आई क्लीन दट कार आई मेंटेन दट कार 
मेरे पांच बार वुड नॉट बी बॉडर वो धंधी पड़ी है पड़ा नहीं तो मैं दूसरी में बैठ के चला जाऊँगा। We have to raise our voice again today. How we have to be afraid? मैं इस वक्त टेलीविजन के ऊपर ये कहना चाहता था। I want people to hear me and understand what I'm saying. ये पढ़ा। We definitely need a reformation. It's very essential, and that will come through education. Modern education. Or education and education and education is the only solution for Pakistan. But when it comes, it will be better. Mother, you don't want to give your education to your people. You have got, got a very, very, very difficult task. You and your and your NGOs, whatever you are, it is a very big task. How do you fight with it? It will keep you in jail, it will keep you crippled, it will keep you in your hands, it will keep you in your hands, it will keep you in your hands, it will cover you in your hands, it will keep you in your hands. You have to fight against that. Uske against aap kya plan kar rahi hai? Nain ji, iska dekhiye kya sawaal ka jawaab ho sakta hai. Ye sahi hai, but we all know Islam aisa religion nahi hai. And like Maniza Paap ne kaha tha, hijack karte hai, ideas ko karte hai, apni insecurities or apni jo shortcomings or failings hai, usko dhoonte hai, usko khud to address nahi kar sakte hai, to Islam qabateen pe aata hai, dousro pe aata hai. We all realize jo humare aage challenges hai, but mashallah, what is very encouraging is, and you know, I am an optimist, so I like to look to the future. I know things are wrong, maybe things have been bad in the past also, but I think this is the best time to be a woman in Pakistan because there is awareness. There are voices which are being raised. Mashallah, look, you're a barrister. I'm so proud of you. We have so many young lawyers in Pakistan also. We have women, you know, are excelling in every field. So that is a positive. And these are women who also have the courage to stand up, make their presence felt, and say the right thing. So Mashallah, there's hope. And, you know, we'll, we'll get somewhere. Maybe I won't see that change in my lifetime. Maybe my children will. Maybe they won't, but it will happen sooner or later, inshallah, and a positive change. So we must end on a positive note, Zindabad Imran Khan, <laughs> and Pakistan Zindabad. <laughs>